question is, do you agree that Scotland should be an independent country? For me, the principle that we work best when we work together. Well, they didn't. Very serious. The referendum. It seems to me that they're not dealing with the issues. Hello, after all the negativity of the mad venting calendar, we're back with the almost entirely positive Christmas show. It features some of the best bits you may or may not have heard and some of the little surprising moments in the debate so far that I think you'll probably enjoy. Our first port of call is the Declaration of Radical Independence read by David Heyman a few weeks back. It is absolutely fantastic to see so many people here today and I guess the message that comes from this conference to all the peoples and all the cultures of this wonderful land of ours that is Another Scotland is possible. A community, a society, and a nation. An economy, an environment, and a home. These are not objects that exist because they are measured and weighed and counted. They are not commodities. They are not someone's gift. They are the footprints each of us leave. They are the sum total of our actions and our will. Scotland wills itself to be a better nation, one we rebuild with our own hands. Who will then teach us our will is not big enough? Who will then tell us our hands are not strong enough or our hearts are not brave enough? Must the hope of the Scots for a better Scotland be the hope of the beaten for a less painful defeat? Must the will of the Scots once again come second to greed and privilege? This despair has a name. Its name is No. <laughs> is a despair that believes poverty inevitable and the decline and destruction of public service necessary. It is the cry of people who believe that wealth should belong to whomever has the sharpest claws and the meanest hearts. Our poverty, our decline, their wealth, their no. For over 30 years we have waited for Britain's rulers of any party to live up to our hopes. They either didn't notice or didn't care or simply betrayed us and took us for granted. But now they notice. Now they see the chance for working men and working women in Scotland to take back a nation. Now they tremble at the thought that we might really do it. <laughs> because what drives no forward is the fear of those who stand to lose their privilege. They fear their kingdom of greed faces its demise. They fear real democracy. They fear that in a land beyond Westminster, we will rediscover hope. That hope has a name. Its name is yes. from knowledge. We know a better economy is possible because we have seen it in other nations. We know greater equality among citizens is possible because we have seen that in other nations. We know that ending poverty, reviving democracy and respecting our environment are possible because we have seen these things too. And we know how to bring these things to Scotland. We must abandon 30 years of the politics of exploitation, the damning, corrosive exploitation that makes a few rich from what the many lose. We must replace it with the politics of sharing, where we all gain from the riches of our land and the fruits of our labour. For centuries, Scotland's ingenuity has been a gift to the world. Now let it be a gift to ourselves.
Let us gift ourselves an economy where we make and create. Let our creativity make working people prosperous. Let prosperous people sustain a great welfare state. Let that state end the fear that comes with insecurity. Let us gift ourselves that Scotland. Look at the forces that stand behind no. Look at the forces that stand behind yes. Choose your side. Together we can raise up our heads and work for a Scotland yet to come, but excitedly visible already. A Scotland of the common wheel of shared wealth and shared well-being. A Scotland that says no to weapons of mass destruction and illegal, illegal unjust wars around the world. Scotland that respects and cares for our elderly because they have already paid their debt to us. A Scotland that nurtures and supports our youth because we know they are our future. A Scotland of social justice and equality. And a Scotland that listens to the voice and spirit of its people. Let us be an example to the world with our vision. Another Scotland is possible. Our Scotland. All of us first. The second thing up is proof of the fact that sometimes you just have to be quiet and listen to Margot. Margot MacDonald, followed by Sandra White. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Deputy Prime uh, First Minister said that this was a large and complex piece of legislation. Fair enough, but who's caring about that? What we're caring about is the central core of it. It's this, the opportunity for Scots to, to face and answer the, the core question that's running throughout all of our politics. And the bill gives us the chance to choose a future of which the, the boundaries and the aspirations and the achievements of Scots will be determined by the Scots themselves, with no excuse to blame anybody else. Now, other Scots feel that the, the future is somehow a barter. If we stay a region of the United Kingdom, there'll be a safety net. The safety nets can fail as well. And if you fall into the safety net of the circus, you're not as big a draw as you are if you try it without the safety net. I'm for going without the safety net because we've got everything that we need to do that. Others see Scotland if not ourselves alone, certainly ourselves alongside other countries and the, the equal legally of any other country in the world. And this is very important for our self-image because it will change from being that of the regionalist and that of the, the people who are always that wee bit behind the fashion, the wee bit behind the times, to being leaders, the way other small countries are. And it's not just the normal small countries that we always quote. Uh, think about Singapore, think what they did. Now, we don't like the way they did it, but think what they did with the numbers and the positioning that they had. So there's, there's lots of other um, examples that we can take. I know that I'll never, ever regret voting yes. This is, this is my legacy to our grandchildren. There's 10 of them, and we'll be expecting them to pick up from where we leave off. We'll have given them the opportunity to go for the highest standards of achievement, highest standards of humanity, just the best. That's what they'll aim for if I vote yes, and that's why I'll never regret voting yes. But I wonder how the people that we call the unionists, and most of them aren't unionists, of course, they're just on the opposite side of the chamber from this one. I wonder how they feel about their legacy. We know what their legacy is now. It's 17 years more of fuel prices pitched higher than inflation. It's heaven knows how many years more of austerity. It's a crippling, it's a crippling of ambition. It's a squeezing down of what we might aspire to in Scotland. That's the legacy that you take with you with the union. And if you don't, then let's hear what the alternatives are, because there have been precious little alternatives voiced in this debate so far. Finally, can I, can I ask people who are trying to be imaginative about what would come post-independence, about the new relationships and, and partnerships that would be struck. 
just have a sense of context, have a sense of timing. It doesn't all happen at the one time. And one thing can happen the week after, and another thing will take 10 years. And you've got to be sensitive to that, because firstly, you lack credibility if you don't get it right, and secondly, you frighten the horses. No, the opponents, I mean. But people ask if they should vote for independence or union with their, their hearts or their heads. Well, like all Scots, their heart's in the right place, so it'll be their heads. They'll probably dictate that they should not vote themselves into poverty, fuel poverty, as I've talked about, and minority. This is what, really, if you think about it, your head will tell you, not your heart. Your heart knows it's Scottish and needs nothing else to think about. But if you think you must about wind your, up, Ms. Macdonald. If you think about your interest and your family's interest in the future, you will vote with your head, you'll vote yes, and you'll vote for an independent Scotland. Next up is Hamza Youssef with a just sublime two minutes of an interview. Sometimes you don't actually need to provide the most positive story in the world. Sometimes just stopping a negative is a very, very good thing. And Hamza Youssef explains brilliantly why here. But on the question of the 18 months, you're saying now that on the question of a department like DFID, you would be talking about a five- or seven-year uh, transition period. That is the truth, isn't it? We could forget about the 18 months. No, that's, that's, what, the, that's what the report talks about. Uh, what we say but very you simply... It. Uh, no, what I say, actually, is, look, for us, the important thing is about how we contribute towards global poverty. Now, what we don't want to do is see any negative impact, well, of course, exactly. on UK government projects. <laughs> but what you're saying is... If, Scottish projects. Right. So, indeed, uh, whatever that transitional period, the Scottish government will act in a responsible way that absolutely yes. helps the poorest in the world. Well, that that's a very interesting point. Priority. Well, what you're saying is that if the value of the contribution that Scotland makes via the UK through DFID at the moment to the um, international development effort